Welcome back to the channel, guys. If you're new here, welcome. Uh, w last week, we did Kenobi Episode 4 review, and uh, we talked about Joker. And it's the same thing this week, except we're doing Kenobi Episode 5, and the Joker 2 might be a musical. Don't know how I feel about that one. But we're going to get right into Kenobi Episode 5. If you guys haven't seen it, full spoiler warning. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if you clicked on this, you know why you clicked. You know why you clicked. But we're going to talk about the things I liked about the episode. But first, before I get to that, I don't want to be the nitpicky Star Wars guy, okay? There's a lot of things about this episode that were fantastic. Like, literally, one of some of the best things I've seen in Star Wars, right? But the writing just continues to be something that is a problem. And you should care if you're a Star Wars fan, you know what I mean? Like, I kept getting told all week, oh, you're being nitpicky and you just are, you're a hater. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, dog. But, like, and we'll, and maybe I shouldn't go with what I didn't like first because it's going to sound too nitpicky. But let's start off with the beginning of the episode. It starts off with the Clone Wars. You got episode two, Hayden Christensen, and episode two, Obi-Wan, having a training sequence, right? which ends up being a lesson for later on in the episode, which it over arcs with everything going on. I thought that was amazing, by the way. Now, Hayden Christensen did look a little weird on the de-aging part. Like, it almost looks like Disney put no effort because I've seen two people today show what they did with the de-aging and it looked good. It's like, why couldn't a billion dollar company do that? So maybe there was something that went on behind the scenes with that. Do you remember how old you were, Justin, when you saw Revenge of the Sith? Or and or Attack of the Clones, but we were I think kids, we were like bro. 11, so when 12. you see Hayden Christensen and and Ian McGregor like fighting again as those characters, it was cool, dude. Like that was actually really cool to get that flashback. And one of the highlights of the episode, you know, you got another flashback in the episode. Reva is at the Jedi Temple during Order sixty six, and Anakin kills her friends, which gives now that gives us a. She says in the episode she's basically hunting Vader because Obi Wan says what we all said. Obi Wan's like, wait a minute. How did you know Vader was Anakin? Like, you shouldn't know that. Like, how do you know that, right? Because we all said that in the beginning of the series, and she explains it. Like, hey, I was at the temple. He killed my friends. I don't think she says whether he killed her, though. Like, I don't, she says she played dead. But then again, here's the writing part, Ascend. The writing is she plays dead. Vader couldn't sense that she was alive still? Like, what? Oh, I played dead? Like, what? And then Vader says later in the episode, he calls her a youngling. And he knows that she is a traitor and he knows that she's been trying to kill him this whole time. It's just, that's what I'm talking about when it comes to the writing, right? Like it's the small things, like the small details, but the Vader scenes in general, we get way more Vader this, this episode. And he's like, you know, front and center of this episode, which I loved, right? We get one of the coolest fucking things about the series and in Star Wars in general, you get Vader versus Reva at the end. And he's so disrespectful to her, he doesn't even pull out his own fucking lightsaber. Because she has a double-bladed one. He pulls hers apart and just throws her hers. Like, he throws her one half and he takes one half and just starts fighting her. I mean, that's how fucking much he doesn't like... You know what I mean? You're you're so insignificant, I'm just going to use your lightsaber. And every time she tries to land a strike on him, he, like, uses the force to stop her lightsaber. I mean, bro, that was fire, dude. You know what I mean? Like, when I saw that, and, like, bro, and not only that, Justin, before that scene even happens, the ship is trying to fly away, and Vader stops the ship in the air and, like, pulls it down to him. Which, again, the CGI on that scene was a little shaky, but I'm willing to look over that because of how cool that was. I, that was amazing, bro. Like, I, we, like, that's what we came into this series hoping that a lot of the episodes would be. And it shows, again, because during the Clone Wars flashback, Sorry, during the, the flashback where him and Anakin are fighting and training, he basically ends up saying to him, your need to prove everybody wrong and your need to be right all the time is why you lost this fight. Your need to prove everybody wrong is why you lost this fight. Why you lost this training session. And again, at the end of the episode, brilliant. It was brilliant that it kind of comes back to that. It's like, hey... Your need to get Kenobi had you blinded by everything else going on and had you and you know what I mean? So that was a cool because in episode four, you know, the whole when I left you, I was the learner and now I am the master. I mean, that, you know, so good. Now, another question and, and, and I and I this might be one of the most stupid fucking things they have ever done. Right. And it doesn't. And this again, this goes into the writing. Bail Organa. Sends a message, Justin. He sends a message to Obi-Wan on this, on this, uh, 
like a little messenger disc looking thing. He sends a message to Obi Wan, and, he, and he's basically saying like, "Hey, I haven't heard from you. If you've been captured by the Empire invader, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to Tatooine. I'm going to, you know." And he says the name of Uncle Owen, the boy Luke, right? Why would you say that in a message if he supposedly had been caught by the? You know what I'm saying, Asen? Oh, hey, Justin, by the way, if you get this message, if you don't get this message and you've been captured and your captures end up seeing this, this is where I'm going and we're getting Vader's secrets on. You, you see how stupid that is? Like, if you feel he's been captured, why would you say that in the message? Why would you say in the message where we're going and the secret son of Vader and the name of the guy on Tatooine? You see how fucking dumb that is, dude? Sorry, I mean, I'm not trying to be nitpicky, but that takes me out of the scene. So Reva sees that at the end, right? Because Vader stabs her, bro. So Vader stabs her, and the Grand Inquisitor comes out from behind Vader. So he didn't die, right? Good. And I'm thinking to myself, hey, Vader, you should have fucking beheaded this bitch like you did Count Dooku. You didn't. He stabs her, and she fucking lives, Justin. Vader and the Inquisitor walk away, the Grand Inquisitor walk away, and she lives. She's sitting there, she t sees the message from Bell Organa, and so now she knows there's a secret boy on Tatooine, and that's why Obi-Wan's been on Tatooine. So now she's gonna go to Tatooine next episode, she's gonna go to Tatooine next episode, and most likely see Luke. I don't know, bro, like again, like there's, it's one of those things where, like there's so much cool things happening, but when the writers just don't put any effort into it, like that kind of stuff, it kind of takes you out of it. I still think the episode was amazing. The episode was good. And we're going to end off with a question. Does Qui-Gon have to appear in next episode? So does Qui-Gon the Force Ghost or his voice, does he have to appear in the next episode? And I think he does. I, and I truly think he does. What a missed opportunity that would be. You got Hayden Christensen back, Obi-Wan, you know, McGregor back. Get Liam Neeson, bro. Get him as a force ghost. I mean, that's easy, easy peasy lemon money squeezy, bro. Like, let's get him in as a force ghost. You know what I mean? Maybe he pumps Obi-Wan up. Maybe he talks to Anakin or tries to talk to Anakin. Who knows, bro? But I know what a big missed opportunity that would be if you don't have him in the in the season finale. He easily could appear to Obi-Wan because Obi-Wan's been calling out to him all episode. I mean, all ser series, right? So you easily could have him come back. Maybe he he's the reason Obi-Wan ends up beating Anakin in their final fight. Or Vader in their final fight. Who knows? But yeah, comment below, guys. If you've seen episode five, what did you like about it? I don't, I probably can go into so much more detail. I sound like a hater, bro. I sucks. But I like the episode. Have you ever felt that way about something? There's a lot of things you like. Be like, ah, come on, dude. What? Hey, you might have been captured. They might have actually got you by now. And if they have, this is where I'm going. And this is who we're going to see. And the name of the... And this is the planet. Because if our captors have seen us... Which they did. Reva ended up seeing it. I can't remember what movie it was recently. Where well, you thought it was good, but then like you were like... Just like a couple... Like thing, it was... Um, this is like something just like t takes you out of the movie. And you're like, oh, fuck. Yeah. I think Disney CGI is fucking... On their TV shows for sure. Yeah, yeah. The, the yeah, mainly just the TV shows. The movies have its like they're like small couple moments. But the TV shows, I don't think I've seen good CGI from them. Yeah. yeah yeah no the mandalorian the pretty decent especially bro. bro i haven't seen mandalorian yeah. when i watched the trailer to the she hulk that shit was fucking ass it just looked like a girl with green painted on her yeah it was so bad like i can't believe that they like gave that the no pun intended the green light the green light yeah, yeah it was good <laughs> lick my lips here yeah comment below guys we're gonna actually end the episode this we're gonna end this off with uh joker 2 man so i talked about joker 2 last week and basically then like a couple days later, they're talking about it being a musical and Lady Gaga is going to be Harley Quinn. I don't know how I feel about that. That actually might be fire, dude. Lady Gaga is Harley Quinn. That actually makes a little sense if you're doing a musical because she can sing, right? Now, I'm kind of torn on this on the topic of it being a musical because like it could literally go both ways, in my opinion. Like it could be really bad or it could be like surprising. Like, wow, that was actually really good for a musical. And I didn't expect it to be good. 
Like I am, I, I'm, I, I'm on the fence about it. I wonder what their definition of musical is, though. Is it like literally all, you know, they they can just have like musical numbers, or it can literally just like what's the movie with Hugh Jackman? Les oh, uh, Miserable, yeah. Whatever. Les, <laughs> Where literally like Les every Miserable. single thing in the movie is like sung. Like I can't four ima- pie, yeah. four pie. I can't imagine <laughs> what where that falls. I mean, just off the musical part, like Harley, like Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn, that that sounds promising to me. I'm not even hating on that. Do we part. even know if Joaquin Phoenix is in the movie yet? Uh, they won. They so yeah, yeah. I would assume it's good if he. If he decided to if do it, which it sounds role. like he he's the one that came up with that idea. He's probably just like, you know what we could do? Musical. And like Todd Phillips was like at gunpoint, like like basically like felt forced. Like yeah. the only way we're going to get Joaquin Phoenix to do this is if we make it a musical. And you know what we should do different? Oh, musical, man. Like, you know what I mean? That sounds like it seems like, hey, we, sh- we should probably try to incorporate, like, maybe Batman in his early years and maybe, like, a little bit of, nah, you know, I got an idea. Uh, musical. That's what, that sounds what that's, that's what it sounds like to me. Yeah. Could we not, like, and, and he wasn't Joaquin Phoenix the one that pretended to be in, like, a rap group and with Casey Affleck and, like, like made himself purposely look insane for, like, a documentary to prove that it was, like, performance art? I don't know. Like, so I'm not surprised that this would be a musical, though. Like, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, again, it could be really bad and really good at the same time. I think it's hella funny how when me and you were talking about, like, what the possibilities of the movie could be. I don't know if if it was on last week's. It was not not podcast, but it was last week's second video. No, but I'm saying I don't think me and you had that conversation on camera. I think it was beforehand when me and you were talking about, like, the possibility of, like, what road they could go down uh-huh. i saw that there like somebody had mentioned that since the the word whatever the fuck they put as the title means a shared disorder between two people they were talking about harley and joker because they're in love so they have like the same disorder i saw somebody p- pitch that theory out there that it was going to be a harley quinn movie as well and I, that was like the least believable plot that i that i could think of and now it's like okay. we were thinking like willem dafoe we were thinking like, you know, three Jokers and, you know, all that other shit. And then the Harley Quinn one was on the bottom. I was like, nah, they're not going to make that kind of movie. And then here we are. Yeah, well, I'm not going to hate on it because they proved us wrong with the first Joker. Right? He won an Oscar for it. The movie made over a billion dollars. So I'll give it a chance if it is a musical. But I, I really hope this doesn't go too far away from the Joker lore or just the Batman lore in general. Like, okay, if you're, I get you're trying to be different, but can we not be so different that you ruin the Joker? That's all I'm asking. But yeah, uh, thank you guys for joining me tonight. If you liked what you saw, please share with your friends. Catch us on Monday for our weekly podcast. Catch us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts as well. Till next time, peace.